This video is to demonstrate how to make pie dough. Pie dough is, there are two varieties of pie dough, flaky and mealy. Flaky, uh, you cut the butter or fat shortening up into pea or almond size pieces. Uh, mealy, you continue to break it up until it um, looks like cornmeal almost. So we have our flour and our pieces of cold butter. Oh. and uh, our salt. And all you do is using your fingers, break the butter up into a sm little bit smaller pieces. And then once it's there, you toss it with the flour and you just keep breaking it up in the flour. Flaky pie dough, the idea is that you alternate layers of dough and fat, and then as it bakes, it kind of forms these layers of flakiness um, as the butter releases its moisture and puffs the dough up a little bit. Mealy dough, you would continue to break it down into much smaller pieces, and that, because it more the flour and butter are mixed, creates a barrier against moisture. So when you have a very moist pie, it's a good idea to use mealy dough, so for fruit pies and so forth. So we're almost at the flaky dough stage. Just a couple of bigger pieces to break up. You can see it doesn't take very long at all. It's really easiest to do this by hand. You want to use cold butter when you do this so that it doesn't um, meld in with the flour too quickly. So you can see the, the chunks of fat in there, and that's what you're looking for for flaky dough. If I wanted to make mealy dough, I would keep going until it all looked kind of like that, where you have just little pieces of fat in with the flour. At this point, we have to add our cold water. Uh, you could add an egg. You could add some milk. Milk makes a richer pie dough, but it's more likely to burn. Uh, you could add some vinegar, which helps to make it a little less likely to fall apart. So I start with two ounces of cold water. We want to keep our pie dough at about 60 degrees. Flaky dough needs a little bit more moisture um, than your mealy dough does, but you don't want it wet. If your pie dough gets wet, um, you're going to develop too much gluten, and that will make a tough pie dough. So I think I'll add a little bit more water, but not much. So now I'm going to knead the dough together. You don't want to knead the dough too much because as you knead, you develop gluten, and gluten, of course, will make a tough pie dough. But you need enough gluten that will hold it together and hold the filling. Once you have your dough coming together, you want to smooth it into a nice, smooth disc. Um, any cracks in the dough, when you go to roll it out, will become a bit large cracks. So you want to smooth them out as much as possible before refrigerating. In good flaky dough, you should actually be able to see the chunks of butter in it. You can use shortening for pie dough, but it doesn't taste as good. Once you have your pie dough in a nice smooth disc, you wrap it in plastic wrap, and you refrigerate. You want to refrigerate, refrigerate a minimum of two hours can refrigerate overnight up to four days, and you can take it at this point and put it in the freezer for three to four months. The pie dough has had, a time, has had time to chill in the refrigerator, and so we're un we unwrap it. You 
You need a decent amount of flour on your table, on the actual dough itself, and your rolling pin. You don't want to put too much flour because then it'll um, make the pie dough too thick, but you need enough so that it won't stick. As you roll the pie dough out, you roll from the center out and keep making quarter turns. As you make turns, make, readjust your flour. If you don't keep turning it, uh, you end up with square pie dough or other oblong type shapes. And also, when you go to take it off the table, it doesn't come off. <laughs> very, so very important. We, keep adjusting the flour and moving the pie dough. Pie dough should be rolled very thin, 1 8 to 1 16th of an inch. And rolling from the middle out ensures that your middle doesn't end up thicker than your ends. So I take my hand and I kind of just go over the dough to make sure that it's even, and then I use my rolling pin to pick the dough up. And then move it over to the pie pan. All that rolling does activate the gluten a little bit, so you want to let it rest for a minute. And then once it's rested, you're going to trim your edges. And I lift up so I get a nice bit on the ends. Uh, pie, the pie dough scraps cannot be reworked. They'll get too tough. But you could use them to cover the top of a cobbler. You can use them to make chicken and dumplings. Uh, you could take them and toss them with cinnamon sugar and bake them as little cookies. So from here, there's a few different ways you can crimp your edges. Uh, you can squeeze between your two fingers, so forth. Or you can crimp the edges this way. Make sure you crimp it outwards. It's easy to crimp them in. And make sure you don't have any scraps overhanging because those will fall off in the oven and burn. From here, you want to dock the bottom of the pie pan. You can use a fork or the end of a spoon or a little paring knife. We dock the bottom so it doesn't bubble up in the oven. And now you want to place it in the refrigerator uh, another 20 minutes just to chill it so it won't shrink when you go to bake your pie. Um, and then fill it. Uh, if you were 
par baking or blind baking your pie. After the 20 minutes, you fill it with foil and then fill it with pie weights or dry beans and bake it until the crust is cooked and take them out. Um, if you're baking it from, if you don't need to blind bake, then you just put your filling in and put it right in the oven and it's ready to go.